that um, uh, November the 4th, um, of course, we do have the uh, trunk retreat, and there is a sign-up sheet uh, for that um, in the uh, foyer, um, so if you will please sign up um, to either decorate a car, or I know there's um, some chili sign-ups on there for people bringing chili, um, so please, you know, keep that in mind. Um, that's, again, that's on November the 4th. That's a Monday night, um, the Monday night following Halloween, um, so like I said, if you wait until after Halloween, you can buy all your candy and it should be on sale. So that's a good thing. Um, several prayer requests that we want to um, go over. We do want to um, continue to remember Landon Hagwood. Um, also want to remember Kellen Streetman. Uh, Kellen's sick tonight. Um, so we'll remember that family. I know they've been battling a lot of sickness lately. lately. Um, and then um, one that I failed to uh, mention Sunday is we want to remember the, the family of Robbie Thomas. Um, Miss Robbie Thomas passed away um, last Monday um, in uh, Emory Hospital. Uh, she's uh, she was actually baptized here at this church, and she can um, she considered this 
her church home when she could come to church. This is where she wanted to be. Um, so we actually we had her memorial service here Sunday afternoon, and uh, just church full of people. Um, you could tell she was very loved. Um, that family's hurting, so uh, please remember the uh, family of Robbie Thomas. Um, if you got an unspoken prayer request, if you'll raise an uplifted hand, um, and let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, we, we thank you for this night, dear God. Jesus, we thank you for bringing us together, dear Lord, one more time. God, I pray that this, this house just be filled with worship, dear Lord, right now. God, don't let it be about anything else, just about worshiping you, dear Lord. Jesus, providing an atmosphere that you can dwell in, dear God. Jesus, I pray that you would just touch on all the prayer requests that have been spoken here tonight. Pray for the ones that have been shown by uplifted hand, dear God. Jesus, you see each and every situation. God, you see each and every test, every trial, every storm that everyone's going through, dear God. Jesus, I pray that you just have your will in these situations, dear Lord. Jesus, I pray for the ones that need healing, dear God, that, that you would just let them seek it out, dear Lord. Jesus, we know that you are our hope, nothing else. God, I pray that you would just continue to move in this service tonight. God, I pray that you would just be in each and every word that's spoken here tonight. Jesus, I pray that you would just touch our tithe and offering as we take it up. God, I pray that you would just break it, bless it, multiply it for the use of your kingdom here at Mount Pleasant. In Jesus' name, amen. Drawing me in the sand, I wanna be standing by your side, holding your hand to let your kingdom come. Let it live in me. This is my song. This is my plea. Let the worshipers arise. Let the sons and the daughters sing. I'm surrendering my heart. I surrender to the King. Let the worshipers arise. Let the sons and the daughters sing. I surrender in my heart. I surrender to the King. Hear it rolling louder, the song of the redeemed. The saints of every nation are awakening to sing. In our hearts is an anthem, for oh, hear the heavens ring. This is our song, a song to our King. Let the worshipers arise. Let the sons and the daughters sing. I surrender in my heart. I surrender to the King. Let the worshipers arise. Let the sons and the daughters sing. I surrender in my heart. I surrender to the King. We all lift our heads and our voices and sing that to you. Let the worshipers arise. 
Let the sons and the daughters see. I'm surrendering my all. I surrender to the King. One more time, just sing it to him tonight. Let the worshipers arise. Let the sons and the daughters see. I'm surrendering my all. I surrender to the King. Let's give him one more hand clap off for praise tonight. Um, one prayer request that I failed to mention, and I apologize, is a, a Sister Deborah Almond. We want to be praying for her. She's supposed to have surgery coming up next month. Unfortunately, it's going to be around uh, Thanksgiving. And uh, But with that being said, she doesn't want any setbacks to not be able to have this surgery. She wants to go ahead and get it out of the way. So be praying that, that she doesn't have any setbacks and that she can have this surgery when she has it planned right now. So continue to remember her in prayer. Um, if our children ministry wants to be dismissed, they can at this point in time. If that's hard tonight, everybody seems so far away back there. You can move down if you want to, that's fine too. I heard somebody speaking the other night, and they were talking about the fact that they spit when they talk and they're getting excited. So, if y'all see me spitting tonight, maybe it's because I'm excited. And, um, there's nothing we shouldn't be excited about. Every, every day should be exciting. So I'm excited. Um, I'm going to read a couple of verses just here to get started, and then we'll delve into the, the message here tonight. Um, and then we are going to have some time of prayer following the message. And I do apologize. We don't have anybody in our sound room tonight, so um, I don't have a way of putting the verses up there. So I'll try to read as clearly as I can. Uh, my throat kind of is starting to go a little bit, so y'all just bear with me. Um, I'm going to start tonight from Romans 6, and I'm going to read verse 16, and I'm going to read verse 23. Um, Romans 6, 16 reads, Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to, you obey? You are that one's slaves whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. In verse 23, very popular verse here, it says, For the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. I'm going to ask if my dad will say a prayer over our message tonight. Amen. You may be seated. So these verses, when you, when you start to read them and you start to imagine in your head one, one word that really stuck out to me big time was slaves. Now, I wouldn't imagine that anybody in this place tonight would want to be a slave. Am I correct in thinking that? I would, I would think so. 
So we don't want to be slaves. But as children of God, as human beings, there are people all over this world that are choosing to be slaves. They're choosing to live a life of slavery. Because it says right here in verse 16, it says, you were that one's slaves whom you obey. Now, I will go ahead and tell you, if I have to be a slave, I would rather be a slave to obedience, which leads to righteousness. Because when you're a slave to obedience, and you're, you can obtain that righteousness, that's going to lead to freedom. So, how do you get the freedom? Because there's got to be a way to obtain it. There's got to be a way to get it. If we want things in this world, what do we have to do? We have to go work. Correct? We have to make money. Everything's got a dollar amount on it. If you want something, you've got to go earn it. And if you don't have the money right then, you've got to sign your life away for the next 10 years and make payments on it every month. So you're still working for it. All right? So what that is, that payment is where the word wage comes in. In verse 23, it says the wages of sin is death. Now, what can I do myself to cover that? What, what, what can I, I... I can't. I can't. I cannot cover that. This is a, if somebody handed me you know, a thousand dollar bill for eating, you know, dinner somewhere, I'm going to have a hard time covering that. This is one of those things that if this got, if this bill got pushed across to me, I'd look at it and say, you know what? I can't cover that. I can't. None of us can. But the thing is, it says the wages of sin is death. So it had to be paid for by death. So what happened was Jesus became our payment. He became our payment for that sin. He was our wage. He died at the cross. So that's why in the last part of that verse it says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. He is our gift. He is a gift that was given to us. He took the payment. He said, you know what? I've got it. Just as Brother Roger preached up here Sunday morning, he says, I'll take it. I'll take everybody's failing grade, and you can, you can pass. You've got that ability to pass. But the thing is, is that it's a gift. We choose whether or not we're going to accept that gift. We choose whether or not we're going to accept His payment. Because we all know that there are still people out there walking around that are either unaware of this gift or that choose not to accept it. It's not, I mean, it's pretty simple. So we have a choice whether or not we are going to let our sin lead to our own eternal damnation, if you want to call it that, or is it going to lead to eternal life? Is it going to lead to a life with Him? I want my life to be with Jesus Christ. I want when I pass away from this life, I want to go meet Him and stand before Him and Him say, well done. I don't want Him to look at me and say, I never knew you. That would be the most heartbreaking thing ever. It's for Jesus to look at me and say, I never knew you. In James 1, 13 through 15, it says, Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and is enticed. 
when he's drawn away by his own desires. So right here it says, you know, God's not going to, to tempt you. He doesn't have the capability to do that because there's no evil in God. But we do live in an evil world. And there are lots of different things out there that we could partake in that could lead to this sin. And this word desires. Desires. What is, what is your heart's desire? Is If your desire is to live for Him, then you're going to do the things that you need to do to make it to that point to where He says, well done. But if your desire is not fully in a life lived with Jesus Christ, then you're going to be pulled and pushed in all these different areas and enticed. He uses that word enticed. You're going to be enticed. And it's going to lead to a life of frustration. Verse 15 says, Then, when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Sin brings forth death. Now, if you're trying to do the right thing, you're trying to walk that, that straight and narrow path, that's great. But we've all talked about that there's many times that there's going to be things in your way in that path. There's going to be things that comes, comes up. Brother Anthony, you like to garden, don't you? And I've had some things that came from Brother Anthony's garden. Very, very good stuff. But I can tell you this, Brother Anthony, you have to keep an eye on that garden, don't you? Because if you let weeds come up, all right, they're going to begin to take over everything, aren't they? Same thing in your walk with God. If you let sin start to develop, it's going to begin to take over. It's going to begin to consume your whole life. So we have to constantly be checking ourselves, constantly looking at ourselves in the mirror, making sure that we don't have something that's keeping us from our full potential, our full blessing that God has for us. Because God has a blessing. God has a calling on all of our lives. But there's different things that can hold us back from achieving what God wants to do through our life. And if you've got something that's holding you back, you need to rid yourself of it. That's why we constantly, every morning, I would think that each one of us get in, the, you know, in front of the mirror and look at ourselves. I know I do. A lot of times I don't like what I see. You know, but if, I mean, if you had something, you know, right there on your tooth or something right there, you know, and you've brushed your teeth and maybe something, you know, kind of slid down, you know, you look back in the mirror, you're going to remove it. You're not going to walk around with stuff, you know, in your teeth. And I mean, it's that easy. If you've got something, if you've got sin in your life, all right, you need to look in the mirror and you need to get rid of it. So, so many times we're, we're so quick to call other people out on their stuff. When we need to take a look in the mirror and we need to worry about our own stuff. 1 John 1, 8 through 9 says, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's what it takes. It takes a cleansing. It takes a cleansing that can only come from God. One of the problems that we have as human beings is a lot of us, we tend to walk around in self-denial a lot of times. We, you know, 
we will tell ourselves something until we actually believe it's true inside of our head. We really will. I've seen people do it before. And if we're living in self-denial, then we're deceiving ourselves. You know, you can lie to yourself all you want to. You can hide stuff from other people, but you can't, you can't lie to God. You can, but you can't hide anything from Him. So, all in all, you can't lie to Him. He knows what's going on. But it says that if we'll confess our sins, if we'll realize these things that we've got holding us back, then He can forgive us of our sins and cleanse us. And that's what He wants us to do. He wants us to come to a place to where we say, you know what, God? I've got this in my life and, and I've messed up, but I'm ready to get rid of it. I need you to come cleanse me. And He wants to cleanse you. He wants to do that for you. I got to thinking about how sin can be like strings. And when I talked about you know sin holding you back, and, and you, can, you can walk, you can walk whichever way you want to, but if you've got something that's attached to you at any moment in time, it can pull. And when it does, you're going to go back this way. And if you've got something that's behind you and you're trying to move forward and it's still attached to you from your past, you need to cut ties with it. Because in the end, it will tug at you every now and then. It's okay to have a past. Everybody's got one. But you don't have to live in your past. You don't have to let it constantly control what you're doing trying to move forward in your life. You don't have to let it have control of you like that. And we shouldn't. When I think about something tied to me, if I had you know, something tied to my arms and my my feet and legs and everything, it could start working me like a puppet. I don't want to be the devil's puppet. I don't want anything tied to me that keeps me from walking in God. So, Jesus died for our sin. But there also needs to be a death inside of us. There needs to be a death. It says in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You should want to be a new creation. You should want that, that old you to die out. But as I said, there are things that we're still holding on to that are holding us back. When we talk about that dying out, I'm sure a lot of us have heard this term before. John 3 and 3 talks about it. It says, this is Jesus talking to, to Nicodemus. It says, Jesus answered him and said, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Unless he is born again. Now Nicodemus, this kind of shot right over his head when he said this. He, he says in verse 4, he says, you know, how can you re-enter your mother's womb? How can you do that? He was thinking about thinking about being born again in a physical sense. But what Jesus is talking about here is He's talking about being born again in a spiritual sense. But we all know to be born again, what has to happen first? There has to be a death. There has to be a death. And that old man or that old woman that you have been or you once were has to die. Because you can't be born again if you haven't already let that die out. 
And it goes even further in verse 5. It says, unless you are born of the water and of the Spirit. That water is a key component there because that water is a cleansing. Now, I'm not saying that if we go in here in this baptistry and put you in there that you know, you're going to have to you know, scrub and all this stuff. You know, we don't have soap back there. God didn't supply us with cleansing soap. He does the cleansing. It's a spiritual cleanse. It's an act of spiritual cleansing. When you hit those waters of baptism, you're saying, you know what, God? I'm dirty. I've got some things that have, have been on me, and I need you to come cleanse my life. I need a fresh start. And once you can get that fresh start, then you're ready for His Spirit to be poured out into you. And once He pours His Spirit into you, then He can pour His Spirit back out of you. Now that might sound like a lot. You know, Levi, he's pouring it in just to take it out. I don't understand. Yes, he is instilling you with power. His power. It says in the Word, greater is he that is within me than he that is within the world. You've got that greater than inside of you if you've got his Spirit living inside of you. You've got the same healing power that he got, you've got the same overcoming power that he's that he's got. You've got all that inside of you. And it's time to activate it. But if we don't have a dying out, then there's no way this can happen. I've said it many times that just like in verse 23, it says the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ. That gift is if we're not taking advantage of that gift, if you're not using that gift, then we're just, we're, we're wasting, we're wasting it. I don't want to waste His gift. I don't want to waste the blood that He shed for me. I don't want to waste the blessings that He's got for me and my family. The blessings that He's got for this church. And you know, if we want this church to succeed, if we want this church to be greater than ever before, you know what? There's going to have to be a dying out in this place as well. And there's going to have to be a cleansing. And I pray for God to come cleanse this place. I pray for any spirit that's in this place that's keeping us back from reaching our full potential at Mount Pleasant, I pray for it to die out. I pray for it to die right now. Because we don't need that. If there's anything in here that's holding us back, it's got to go. If there's anything in your life that's holding you back, it's got to go. If there's something that's holding back your family, it's got to go. That's the mentality we have to have. We've got to have that mentality. I know I don't want to live a life as a slave to the devil. I don't. I want the things that He's got prepared for me. And is it always going to be easy? Probably not. Are th some things going to seem unfair? Yeah, probably. But I still want it. It's not going to keep me from trying to obtain it. To obtain a, a victory. That victory in Jesus that we've all got the ability to obtain. Just like, just like a sports team. If they want victory, they've got to go in and they've got to practice all week. They've got to work on it. It's not going to be easy. It's not just going to be given to them. There might have been a group of players Saturday that thought that they were just going to walk into the stadium and something was going to be given to them. Guess what? It wasn't. It's not going to be that easy all the time. You've got to work at it. You've got to come 
every day ready to put forth the work and know that, yeah, there's some things that might come against you, but there's no weapon formed against you that can prosper through Jesus Christ. And as long as he, you've got Him on your side, you don't have to sit there and live a life of worry. You don't have to worry about that. Wednesday night, we took the youth to a thing called Fields of Faith. It's a uh, Fellowship of Christian Athletes event that they had over in Madison County. And one thing that the guy there that was delivering the message, one thing that really stuck with me that he said, and I guess it stuck with me because I never thought about it like this before. Um, for those of y'all that don't know, I was very involved in FCA when I was in high school. Um, I was president of FCA my junior and senior year of high school, and I love FCA. I was, like I said, a uh, big part of it then, and I'm still a supporter of FCA now. But when we got together, we used to get together on Wednesday mornings. They called it a huddle. Even way back then, they still called it a huddle. And he was talking about the fact that when you go and watch a sporting event, you know, a football game, when, when you're going into the stadium, you're not going to get all excited and say, you know what, I can't, wait to, I can't wait to watch them huddle. I can't wait to watch them just, you know, stand there around each other and, and you know, talk. People, people aren't talking about the huddle. They're not. They're talking about what happens after the huddle. When you break the huddle and you go out there and you have to run the play, well, this might be a little huddle meeting tonight, but guess what? Once we leave this place, it's up to us to go out there and run it. It's up to us to go out there and live this life. It's up to us to go out there and witness to other people. And if you want to be a witness, if you want to be a true minister of God's Word through your actions, through the life that you're living, these are things that you've got to have taken out of your life. You've got to have this, this sin. You've got to remove it. Now, am I saying that you know, you're, you're going to go and you know, be sinless the rest of your life? That's not what I'm saying. Paul talked about that that he sinned and had to ask for forgiveness daily. And that was Paul. A lot of people consider Paul to be one of the greatest apostles ever. And he said that. So just know that you're still, you're going to fall short every now and then. But it's up to us to get back up and to keep moving forward. And if you've got something holding you back, if you've got something tied to you, it's time to release it. It's time to cut ties with it. It's time to separate ourselves from whatever's holding us back. Whether it be on a personal standpoint, a family standpoint, or a church standpoint. We've got to cut ties with it. I'm going to ask if everybody would stand tonight. And it's, it's our third Wednesday night, so we're going to have some prayer time. And I want you, as we find a place of prayer in this place tonight, I want you to pray personally. All right, I want you to pray for your families. But I want you to pray for this church. I want you to pray that if, if there's something that is holding us back, if there's a spirit in this place that needs to go, I pray that it goes. And I want you to pray that it goes. Because we don't need it here. Because I honestly, I think that the greatest hour of this church is yet to be seen. God can still do amazing things in this place. But we've got to cut ties with some of those things that are holding us back. 
we've got to cut ties with things that are holding us back personally in our personal walk with God. So if you will, everybody come down. I'm going to go back there and start some music and just find a place of prayer. And let's get, let's get lost in it tonight. I know that it's easy to come down here and you know, pray for two minutes and go back to your pew. Really spend some time with God. He wants, he wants that communication. He longs for it. So let's come down and, like I said, just find a place of prayer and let's get lost in Him tonight.